Okay, welcome. This is Explore Game Dev, and my name is Sam Keen, and we are going to look at Godot 4 today. And the very basics of importing a 3D model into a scene and then putting some very basic player movement over the top of that. And we'll see just how easy that is in Godot 4. So here I'm in 4 Beta 4, and I've got a new project started. So let's go ahead and add a 3D scene. Let's rename that to World. There we go. Within that, let's go to the 3D view. Here we're in the view that's very familiar, if you've seen this in Godot 3. One thing is if you come in and you don't see a skybox or any lighting really, you can turn on these preview buttons here for preview lighting and preview environment. Then you'll see that skybox and some better lighting. So just a tip there. So in this video, we're going to import a ship and move it around with a little bit of player movement. So we need a floor to do that for this ship to rest on. So a way to do that is with a 3D mesh instance. So we'll add that here. Let's go ahead and search for that. Mesh instance 3D, that's our guy. We'll import that and then this needs a mesh applied to it. In our case, for a floor, a plane mesh is a good pick for that. So here it is here, it's not too big. So let's increase the size just a bit. Something like 50 by 50 should do fine. There we go, we can back away a little bit. So we have that mesh in place. We now need to add a collision shape to it so that when we set things on it, we'll go ahead and save the scene real quick. Uh, when we place the model on it, it you know doesn't fall through when we push play. That can be done easily here by the means of this tab here, the mesh tab. If you click that, you'll see create tri-mesh static body and you can see what that's doing here, and it sounds like just what we need. So click that and create, and you'll see that it's created a static body 3D and a collision shape 3D connected to that. And those both are built to the current size of the plane here. So that is actually everything we need for our floor. One thing to see here, though, is our floor is just one color, and as we move the ship along that, it might be a little hard to detect that movement visually. So we can simply add some texture to this mesh, and an easy way to do that is icon is always here in a Godot project. We can simply just drag that and drop it on there. And if you want to know exactly what that's doing in the geometry of our mesh, we can see there it's added a material override of this image file. Not the prettiest thing, but it gives us some texture perspective to, to detect the movement of our ship once we add that next. So now we're going to add our ship. In this quick video, won't have time to build a ship, but KinniSight has a great supply of 2D and 3D models, among other things. I definitely recommend you checking this out. What we've done in this video is grab the space kit, and we're going to use one of these spaceships out of that. So we've downloaded that to our desktop. And we see those here, starting with craft are those ships. It comes down in different formats. We want to select the GLTF, which is the recommended format for Godot. You can read more about that in the documentation about importing 3D scenes. And we see here that, yes, GLTF is the recommended format. And we'll see that that comes with these file extensions. And that's what we see here with Kinney. He has provided those GLB file types. So simply just drag and drop that into our project. And we see it here. You can tell that by the icon here, and if you read the documentation, these are imported as a scene of themselves. But you're not meant to directly edit these. If you leave this intact, you can re-import the scene at a later date after you've made changes in, say, your 3D program. And you won't be clobbering any changes you've made here. In order to make those changes, we will be, in a moment, creating a new inherited scene. And that's where we will make our changes. But before we do that, we're going to adjust some of the import settings of this 3D model. So we want to change it to a new type that's in Godot, the character body 3D. And character body 3D is the renamed from, I believe it's kinematic body in Godot 3, since it's almost always used for the character of your game. They just simply rename that so it's a little more obvious. And we can change the root name to something a little more helpful like ship. And just making those two changes, then we'll re-import, and we're done there. And now we can return to that task of and making a new inherited scene from our imported 3D model. So we do that. Go back to Scene tab. We can see our ship here. Uh, if we go ahead and go to Perspective, and let's look at it from the top, we can see, if we zoom in a little, the pivot point is not within the ship. So if we were, say, to rotate our ship, it's not 
doing what we would expect. And so that's going to cause issues in the game. But we can fix that quite easily. So we have our ship. And if we go to the node just below that, node 3D, we can offset our guy's transform. And I looked at this before. And if about a negative 2, that brings it on line there. And then the z-axis, if we do a negative 1.5, now we are where we expect to be. And if we do our rotations, after we select ship, that's sort of the sorts of rotations you would expect for the ship. So let's go ahead and bring that back. Let's save this as a ship scene. And so now we can see we have our world and our ship. So we go back to world. We can now import that ship as we would any other child scene. So there is ship and let's open that. So now we see we have our ship and right away it's giving us a warning that's common that we need a collision shape for the ship just as we had for the floor earlier. So we can add that easily. Collision shape 3D, yeah, that's it. And then the second warning comes up that this collision shape needs a shape applied. You know, a very common selection there is the capsule shape. So let's zoom in a little so we can see that. We need to rotate him. Let's rotate, negative 90. There we go, we can see that guy. Rotate around, and I think actually I wanna move the ship up just a little bit off the ground. And now our collision shape, we can move up just a bit. We probably want to flatten that out so it encompasses a little more of the ship. And here we're not too worried about being precise, just a demo. So I just get it sort of, we just want to see the collision shape clear the floor essentially. So that looks good. So now we need to add a camera. So let's just go to ship. Let's add a camera. 3D. There we go. Let's rotate around. Let's see our camera is right there. And we're going to have like a third person perspective. So we'll move it. So we'll move it behind the ship and up. And let's rotate it down a little bit and click this preview button. See that? I think we need to go up a little more. So that's good enough for the game for, for this demo. So we'll call that good. So now we have our camera, so we should be able to click play on the scene. You can see the lighting's all messed up. We're not getting the sort of uh, nice lighting we have in the editor preview. Just as we had these settings to add preview to the editor, we can add those settings to the scene with this little vertical ellipsy thing. So if you open that, you can see you have preview sun and preview environment. We can add to the scene. And you see as we do that, they show up over here. They're full-blown nodes, so you can make adjustments on them, but the defaults are pretty good. But now those are in the scene, so now when we play, we should see that lighting come in. And we do. Great. So now we just need to add movement. That will actually just take a f seconds, essentially, so in Godot 3. So we go down to our ship, or sorry, in Godot 4. So we come down to our ship and add a script, and you'll see it detected that this was a character body 3D, and it says, hey, I have a template that's, you know, very common for making movement on a character body, so would you like to use that? And yes, we would. So if we look in here, those who have written this type of code, it should look pretty familiar. It's just the basics of moving left, right, forward, back, and jump is added in here also. Just play again. And there we go. We're moving with the arrow keys. You can change those keys if you want to, like... Uh, AWST, and we even have jump, which, you know, maybe is not the right thing for a ship. But we have really the basics of a, a game of this type where you're moving this sort of axes for the ship. You could add firing from the ship, add some enemies, maybe a couple particle effects on those thrusters, and you're good to go. So thank you very much for joining me, and I hope this was helpful. It shows how you get started quite quickly in Godot 4 with adding a 3D asset that we got from the excellent store at uh, kinney.nl. Likes and subscribes are always appreciated. That really helps me invest in this channel, and we will see you next time. Thank you.